Dogs are awesome. They're called a human's best friend for a reason. However, every dog is different in terms of temperament. I admit it's so hard not to stop every dog you see and pet them. But not all dogs are friendly towards strangers or even towards other dogs. So if you happen to come across a reactive dog and unknowingly try to give it a big hug, you cause nothing but stress and fear. But don't worry, that's why dog owners came up with the color-coded bandana system to let you know whether you should keep your distance or you can go and say hello. And as a bonus, those bandanas make their dogs look even cuter. So. Get ready for the Doggo Fashion Show. Our seven dog models will walk the runway as I explain to you what each color means. Let's start with white, shall we? Our first Doggo model, housing on the runway, is white. He's a big and cuddly 11-year-old golden retriever. But what does the white bandana around his neck mean? This might break your heart a bit, but that means he either has a hearing or sight problem, or he's totally deaf or blind. But again, that doesn't mean his owner loves him any less. Look how happy he is. And you'll be relieved to know that his condition has nothing to do with how long he'll live. He's got many years ahead to jump around and smell all the corners of the street. It only means you should approach him, keeping in mind that he might be startled by you. Okay. Now that you know what white bandanas mean, how about we take a look at the colors of the rainbow in a row? The first is red. Red can mean many things for us two-legged folks, love, anger, or passion. But in the doggo world, it means danger. Take a look at Candy here. She's a four-year-old Rottweiler. You see her red bandana? That means she won't be so sweet to you if you approach and try to pet her. Even if you see her acting loving and cuddly towards her owners, don't be fooled. Her owner makes her wear the red bandana for a reason. They're warning you about her temperament issues. So, if you see other dogs wearing red bandanas like Candy here, beware and don't get too close. Avoid any interactions and give them space, for they're not to be messed with. The next color is orange. Look at Buddy, the six-year-old chocolate Labrador Retriever, owning the doggo runway with his orange bandana. That means he's friendly towards all humans, adults, children, you name it. However, he doesn't like to be around other dogs. A canine might not enjoy being around its peers for several reasons. First of all, it may have had a traumatic event in the past, like getting attacked by another dog. Secondly, it might be scared of other dogs due to size differences. Thirdly, it might see them as a threat to its status. Or it might simply be too protective of its owner and see other dogs as a threat to both its and its owner's safety. No matter the reason, you'll know when a dog is feeling scared or threatened by these behavioral signs. It might growl, expose its teeth, bark excessively, point its ears up, or even try to bite. If you're a dog owner who is facing these issues, but the reactions of your dog are not that intense, you can try to get your furry friend familiar with other dogs constantly so it gets desensitized. But if it acts uncontrollably, you can seek help from a professional dog behaviorist. Next up, we have the color of sunshine. Look at Daisy the two-year-old King Charles Cavalier, walking the doggo runway, sporting a yellow bandana. Yellow might seem like such a happy color to you, but that's not really the case in terms of the bandana color system. If a dog is wearing a yellow bandana, that tells you to approach it slowly and with care, because that means the dog is undergoing therapy or has some disabilities. On the other hand, it can also mean that the dog is anxious and nervous. It can be hard to predict how it will react, and it can get edgy easily. So, you need to be gentle towards the dog, or be quiet and calm around it. That way you can show both the owner and the dog that you are a considerate dog lover, and you have respect towards whatever issues the dog might be undergoing. Keep in mind 
It always helps to ask the owner first if it's okay to go near the dog and pet it. Our next dog model is a two-year-old standard poodle. Do you see his green bandana? It makes him look like a happy little leprechaun, right? So you probably guessed it right. If a dog is wearing a green bandana, that means it is friendly and sociable indeed. It loves to be petted, and it sure loves playing games. It'll do all sorts of funny things to entertain you, for that makes it truly happy. The green bandana means it is also attentive and curious. That's one goofy fella. You can enjoy activities like playing frisbee and rolling on the grass together with that cutie pie. By the way, the same goes for their behavior towards other animals. They act friendly and playful when they're around other dogs too. Still, you should always ask the owner if you can approach the dog, no matter how friendly it is. That's the golden rule of being a respectful dog lover. You know the saying, why so blue? Well, don't worry. If you see a blue bandana around a dog's neck, that doesn't mean it's going through some sad phase or anything. Just look at how happy Milo, the three-year-old husky, looks. His eyes certainly match his blue bandana. So, if a dog is wearing a blue bandana, that just means it is a working dog or one in training. Unlike companion dogs, working dogs are trained professionally to assist people in special tasks. There are many types of working dogs, and these include assistance dogs that are trained to help disabled people with certain daily tasks, search and rescue dogs, herding dogs, and detection or sniffer dogs. By the way, it is believed that dogs should perform tasks and always have something to do, whether they're companions or working dogs. This way, they will live much longer and happier because those tasks will keep them physically and mentally active. This will also help eliminate unwanted behaviors, such as excessive barking. Last but not least, we have Purple. Our last dog model is Lewis, the six-year-old pug. Unfortunately, she's a bit of an allergic furball. That's why she's wearing that purple bandana, to let you know that you shouldn't give her any food without asking her owner first. And actually, that goes for any dog even if they don't have a purple bandana around their neck. You see, some foods that are safe for humans can be quite harmful to dogs. The list of the top 10 most dangerous foods for dogs is as follows. Avocados, grapes and raisins, garlic and onions, caffeinated drinks, macadamia nuts, cooked bones, salt, milk and other dairy products, artificial sweeteners, and candies and chocolate. On the other hand, Foods like carrots, apples, cucumbers, blueberries, and green beans are some of the safer options. However, one important thing to be noted here is that while some food may be safe to eat for some dogs, others might still be allergic to them. For example, chicken is usually considered to be a safe food, but it can trigger some skin problems in certain dogs. That's where the purple bandana comes in handy. So, if you see a dog wearing one, just don't feed it anything without consulting its owner. Keep in mind, regardless of what color the dog's bandana is, never assume a dog's reaction, and always make sure to ask the dog's human if it's okay to interact with it. So, you take your best friend Max to the doggy park. He meets the Labradoodle of his dreams, and they start playing together. Peaceful tail wagging quickly grows into biting each other. Oh no, they're going for the necks! You grab Max and rush back home. Well, in fact, there was no need to rush home. Playing with open mouths is called mouth wrestling or jaw sparring. It's a healthy way of interaction between dogs. They inherited this habit from their wolf ancestors. When a dog is a puppy, it has to learn some important skills, including fighting. Mouthing is just an imitation of it. When a puppy matures, it will know how to protect itself and respect boundaries of other doggos. All the chasing, wrestling, growling, and face biting is a way to socialize with others and have fun in the dog world. It's something like sibling rivalry and playful fights in the human world. You can tell your dog is mouthing and not attacking another dog when it's bouncing with happiness or lies down during the game. This way, it's giving the playmate an advantage. They can also switch roles. Now, some dog breeds are less peaceful.
peaceful than others. A doggy can also feel afraid, territorial, or overprotective toward its human. In this case, jaw sparring can grow into a real fight. When one dog loses the game spirit, bites too roughly, and holds down the rival for longer than it should, well, the poor playmate will start yelping. This can make the hunter and protector instincts in the other dog even sharper. When the dog's body stiffens, it stops bouncing and starts chasing, showing its teeth and gums. Well, it's time to stop that game. Things get even worse when you see the hackles on its back go up and you hear some deep growling. If your pet is often going too far with mouth wrestling, you can consult a dog trainer to stop this. It's also a good idea to teach it to be gentle with humans when it starts mouthing. Like, let it play with your hands and you yelp when it gets too much for your liking. The dog will startle for a moment and feel like it's done something wrong. But that's good! This is teaching your dog something called bite inhibition. You can also give it a toy or chew bone for a substitute when it tries to gnaw on you. Cute kittens and cats under the age of 2 also practice mouthing. They often tumble all over each other and bite one another's necks to let out their hunter instincts. In the wild, cats are fast and merciless, and they can't hide it behind all the purrs in the world. Play biting with other kitties can also teach your little Mr. Biscuit to be more gentle when it plays with you and other humans, so it's all good. Play sneezing is something many dogs do. It's a sign they're happy and enjoying the process. When they're doing something fun, they often curl their lips, their nose wrinkles then, and they sneeze. Such sneezes are always short as they come from the nose and not from the lungs. Dogs tilt their head when you call their name or make an unfamiliar sound to hear it better. They're trying to adjust the outer ears to understand where the sound comes from. They can't understand what you say, but they can catch a familiar tone and connect it with food, walk, or playtime. They can also guess what you say from your face expression. Tilting the head helps them see better with less of their muzzle in the way. Now, cats often knock things off tables and bookshelves to express their prey drive. They're natural hunters and explorers. The only way they can test a new object is patting, squatting, and knocking it down with their paws. Things that roll after falling make them playful. Once a cat notices you never ignore the sound of a falling something, it might start dropping things on purpose to get your attention. Cats like to sharpen their claws on your furniture to leave a visual mark on their territory. They also do it to let their claws renew and stretch their back and shoulders. The couch seems perfect for it because it's not too short and is sturdy enough. Well, you gotta find a good replacement with the same qualities to let your kitty scratch and release its emotions. Your dog gets sudden bursts of energy known as the zoomies when it's really happy. They can also circle the room at spaceship speeds to get rid of energy built up after some sleep. For puppies, Zoomies can be a nervous energy reliever. That's why they often do it after bathing. Now, your cat loves to sleep in the sink for nostalgic and temperature-regulating reasons. First, the curvature gives them the same feeling of safety and pleasant pressure around them they felt as part of a litter. Second, the ceramics can serve as a nice cool-down surface after some time at a warm windowsill or elsewhere. Finally, your kitty might just be trying to spend more time with you as it knows you often visit the sink area. Now, if your fish starts rubbing itself on gravel, banging against objects in the tank, and swimming quickly without going anywhere, it must be really stressed. The reason could be improper water condition, conflicts with other fish, or unbalanced diet. Fish always need a place to hide and don't like loud noises and banging coming from the outside. Cats freak out when they see a cucumber because it looks too much like their longtime enemy, snakes. They're naturally programmed to jump up in the air to prevent themselves from a bite. Anything that looks similar, from toys to eggplants, causes a similar reaction. It's never a good idea to show them things like that for fun. It can really mess up their mental health. Your dog never winks to be cuter on purpose. They do it when they have something in the eye or dry eye. It's also a way to break some tension and avoid a fight. Direct eye contact is a show of challenge in the dog world. Your pup winks at you or other dogs when it's ready to back down. Now, if your cat winks at you, it's saying it really feels comfortable with you. Slow blinking in cats is called a cat kiss. 
You can try slowly shutting and then opening your eyes and see if the cat does the same. Felines rarely sneer at humans, but do it as a reaction to other cats' invisible message. They can sense pheromones other cats leave in the environment. When they trap it with their tongues against the roof of their mouth, their lip curls. A lot of dogs like to move their bowl or some pieces of food from one location to another before eating. This way, they're trying to protect their most precious resource. They think that when they move it, no one will be able to find it and take it from them. Cats often paw or knead the floor before or right after they eat. This is an instinct that goes down in cat generations. Big cats do it too. In the wild, they have to hide food remains so that their enemies can't find them. If you don't like your cat doing food caching, you can remove the bowl right when it's done eating or distract it with a toy. Hamsters love their wheels so much because they're natural runners. In the wild, they can run long distances over the night. They need a wheel in the cage to be happy, healthy, and fit. And now you can tell a hamster is happy when it stretches and plays with its bedding and toys. If it's constantly biting the cage, trying to escape, it's not feeling good and comfy. You might want to get a bigger cage to make it feel better. If your cat is walking between your legs, it's not trying to trip you. It's trying to leave its scent on you to claim you as its property. It also rubs against your legs when it's excited about getting some food. Now, kitties can be sneaky. They know such signs of affection make your heart melt, and you'll give it what it wants. Pet parrots inherited the habit to only eat a tiny bit of food and drop the rest from their wild ancestors. Scientists found that in the wild, they mostly drop unripe fruits. They're more careful with food during breeding season when they have little ones to feed. And dogs sometimes bark and move their feet in their sleep because they're dreaming. If you look at them, you'll notice their eyes are closed but making rapid movements as they're in deep sleep cycle. Hey, my dog wolfs and sometimes cries in his sleep, and his legs go crazy. That must be some dream. Hey, how about your pet? Braces for dogs, unimaginably colorful shrimps, fireworks spitting fish. The animal kingdom is full of surprises that prove that nature has the most inventive mind. A single strand of hair can hold up to 3 ounces, meaning, theoretically, all the hair on your head could hold the weight of two full-grown elephants. Some snails can sleep for up to 3 years, but they usually get in 13 to 15 hour snoozes and wake up with a 30 hour boost of energy. Periodical cicadas come out of their underground shelters every 13 or 17 years. This is a biological adaptation so that no other animal can depend on them as a food source. Most animals' lifespans are shorter. Scientists theorize that early humans lost their fur so they wouldn't overheat while hunting. We instead evolved to store fat to keep warm, which is why your head is covered in long, thick hair. There's no fat on your scalp. Dogs can wear braces to fix their teeth just like humans. And you might not believe it, but this invention has existed for over 30 years now. Dogs can also have dental fillings if they chipped one of their teeth in case of cavities and crowns. The smallest monkey in the world, the pygmy marmoset, could hug your thumb like a tree trunk. Owls are the birds able to see the color blue, and they don't exactly have eyeballs like humans. Theirs are more like eye tubes, since they can't move inside the eye socket like your eyes. An owl must rotate its whole head. Butterflies feel smells with their feet, snakes with their tongues, and octopuses with their arms. Blind mole rats live underground and send each other information by banging their heads on the tunnel walls. Reindeers change their eye color depending on the season. Their eyes are gold in the summer and blue in the winter. Bees show the location of pollen source to other bees with a waggle dance. The fastest registered human punch is 45 miles per hour. A mantis shrimp strikes at 50 miles per hour. These creatures also have 16 light-sensitive cones in their eyes against our three. And thanks to that, they can see colors unimaginable for us humans. They're very colorful too, even to our eyes. And how they see each other is beyond our wildest fantasies. 
Pistol shrimps, however, beat their relatives in power because they close their big right claw with such speed that it creates a white-hot air bubble underwater. And it's literally hot. The temperature of this tiny bubble momentarily reaches almost that of the surface of the sun. The oldest tree we know is called Methuselah. It's 4,700 years old. This thing was a sapling in the 27th century BCE. Dolphins sleep with one half of their brain resting while the other remains alert. Horses have one heart like you and me, but they have a heart-like organ at the bottom of each foot called a frog. It pumps blood up the leg every time the horse stands on it. Many types of seahorses are similar to chameleons, not only because of their ability to change color, but also in that their two eyes move independently from each other. Some seahorses can't change color at will, but they're born with color to blend with their habitat. For example, red for coral or green for algae. Baby flamingos are grayish white. Algae and seafood they feed on contains a substance called carotenoids. And thanks to it, over time, flamingos acquire pink plumage. It's the same substance that's present in carrots, and your skin can turn orange too if you eat too much of it. The black and white color of a zebra doesn't help it hide from predators. What it does is help avoid bites from dangerous insects, such as tsetse fly. A fly sees a zebra, but when approaching, it flies by or crashes into the animal and bounces off. Nobody knows exactly why this happens. One theory says that the black and white coat of a zebra creates an optical illusion that confuses insects. Thanks to their tallness and good eyesight, giraffes can see danger approaching from afar. Their head is like a watchtower, and they warn each other of the threat in a very unusual way, with the help of their low humming sound. Seagulls can drink salt water. There are salt-secreting glands near their eyes. These glands purify seawater very quickly, and the salty residue that comes out through the nostrils. Perhaps the most impossible creature in the world is a jellyfish. It doesn't have any sensory organs we're used to, like eyes, ears, and nose. It has no skeleton, but most importantly, it hasn't got a brain or a heart. Its body is almost entirely made of water. That's why if you take a jellyfish out of the sea and put it on the shore, it will soon melt. At the same time, there's a species of jellyfish that can live forever in a safe environment. Horseshoe crabs have two eyes on the sides of their head, five more on top of their shell, two near their mouth, and one on the tail. The latter is used as a photoreceptor. It catches the sunlight and tells the crab if it's day or night outside. Hippos don't get their skin burned in the blazing sun because they produce their own sunscreen. It's kind of pink sweat that covers their whole body. Kangaroo rats can go without water for years and sometimes even throughout their entire lives. They live in extremely arid deserts and get all the water they need from the seeds and plants they feed on. Plumed basilisk lizards have an uncanny ability to run on water. First, their hind feet are equipped with long toes with fringes of skin that can spread out in the water. As a result, a bigger surface of the lizard's foot comes into contact with the water. Then it pumps its legs incredibly fast when it runs on water. This creates little pockets of air that prevent the animal from drowning by keeping it on the surface. The cardinal fish has been called firework spitting for a reason. When this little critter guzzles too many ostracods, a type of zooplankton, the tiny creatures start to glow inside the fish's body due to their bioluminescence. As a result, the cardinal fish becomes more visible, exposing it to predators. That's why the fish spits the ostracods out, which looks like it breathes outbursts of bluish fire. Opossums are immune to snake venom. The secret is a peptide that helps these critters neutralize dangerous chemicals. This is why snakes are a favorite treat on a possum's diet. Meerkats have dark patches around their eyes, but these black circles aren't just there to make the critters more adorable. They also function as built-in sunglasses. The dark fur on the patches blocks the blazing sun, so meerkats can gaze directly at the sky. 
On top of that, the sentry, a meerkat that watches out for birds and other predators, can easily see danger and alert its mates. Salmon are skilled navigators who could put most drivers to shame. However, this competition wouldn't be fair. After all, salmon can sense the planet's magnetic field and use this knowledge if they get lost. Dingoes have rotating wrists, just like humans. This helps them climb trees, use their paws like hands to catch food, and even open doors. Sponge crabs are the icons of style in the animal kingdom. They dig and cut into sea sponges to make their very own hats. The purpose of this hat is protective, though. Sponge crabs use them to hide from predators and protect themselves against bites. Flying squirrels glow under UV light, emitting pink light. It happens because they can absorb light and emit it back in another wavelength. You're riding the bus to your new friend's house. You've never been to that part of the city, and you don't really know the area. You get off the bus, and you've got to walk a block. As you walk, something sends a shiver down your spine. Uh-oh, seems like it's a stray dog. Of course, dogs are people's best friends, but sometimes even they can pose a serious danger. Joggers, runners, and bikers may trigger the dog by their motions. So walking really fast or running to escape from the dogs is something you should never do. First, any dog is faster than you are. Even the tiniest chihuahua can accelerate to 15 miles per hour, about the average human running speed. But bigger dogs run at twice that pace, while greyhounds can be faster than some cars running at 45 miles per hour. I just hope they don't get speed limit fines. So, you become attractive to a dog if you're riding a bike or even a skateboard. If you stop, the animal might just lose interest in you. Don't try to move faster, a dog can easily catch up with you. Next, always avoid direct eye contact. You need to stand a bit sideways. This way, you're a narrower target for the dog. Still, always keep the dog in your peripheral vision. Also, you need to distract the dog's attention somehow. It's probably a good idea to always have something that can be used for this purpose. It can be a sweatshirt tied around your waist. You can pull it off quickly and throw it to distract the dog. If you go jogging and you know that there might be stray dogs, take a stuffed dog toy with you. In case of emergency, even throwing a shoe can be a good idea. But walking home barefooted doesn't sound like a nice experience. Ow. If the worst is inevitable, make sure to protect your face, throat, and chest. To protect your fingers, keep your hands in fists. It may sound strange, but there's actually the best place to be bitten. It's the forearm. If you're bitten, don't pull away. It'll just make things worse. If you walk with your small pet, take it in your arms to protect it from a stray dog. Most stray dogs are afraid of humans, but you can show them your intentions are nothing but peaceful. If you yawn, lick your lips, and keep sideways to the dog, the animal feels calmer. If you let that dog approach you and take a sniff, that's cool. Just don't raise your hands while they're sniffing. They don't expect it and might get surprised and, unfortunately, bite. Ouch! Finally, a dog may simply be lost and missing its beloved human. If you see stray dogs, always report them because the owners are surely looking for their fluffy friends. A friendly-looking animal may trick you into thinking you can pet them. Don't touch unfamiliar animals, no matter how sweet they are. If you see the animal is kind of aggressive, stay away, but don't run. If you feel like you've got to escape, do that slowly, with no sudden moves. Raccoons aren't domesticated, and even though some people claim it's possible to tame them, it's only partially true. First, raccoons don't want to mess with those who are significantly larger, so try to appear as sturdy as possible if you meet one in the wild. Stand up, open your chest, wave your arms. These simple steps might be enough to keep the raccoon away, but if it's still approaching you, spray some water on them. Yeah, they like washing things, but if someone sprays water on you, it's a bit unpleasant. The good thing is that it's totally safe for both the animal and you. If you live in a raccoony area, make sure you keep windows and doors closed all the time. They like getting into houses looking for some yummy human food. In case you see this unexpected guest in a mask that you didn't actually invite, just stay calm. 
the best thing to do is to leave the exit door or the pet door open, close the doors to all the other rooms, and let the animal find the way out on its own. In case the guest just won't leave, you might want to help. You can show the raccoon its way with a broom, gently directing the animal out of your house. But make sure you don't corner the animal, or the raccoon might want to defend itself. A raccoon never wants to pay you a visit if you've got nothing to offer. Don't feed them. The more food you give them, the more raccoons will come to see you. They must hear it on the grapevine that there's some human giving free food to raccoons. If you have pets who like to hang out in the yard and you leave them food, don't forget to clean up after your pets finish the meal and never leave some food for later. It may attract raccoons and they don't really get on well with dogs. Never leave trash outside. Surprisingly, raccoons just love it. Clean up the yard after you've finished your barbecue. Food scraps are super attractive for these animals. If you've ever shared an apartment, there must have been a housemate you wanted to evict. Bang, bang. Did you hear that? It sounds way heavier than rain and even hail. Those are possum paws that make all this noise. First thing you want to do is cut the access to the roof. Since these animals just want to hide somewhere safe, you can buy or build boxes for them and leave those boxes in your garden. It may be even more comfy for possums than the roof. If they still hang out on top of your house, just make sure there are no holes and gaps so they do it safely. These guys are harmless for humans and pets. They're definitely way more afraid of you than you are of them, and they kind of faint when they find the situation dangerous. They hardly ever attack anyone, and they might do that only to protect their young. Coyotes can be found almost everywhere in North America, so chances are you're going to meet them one day, especially if you live somewhere around California. Cool. These fox-like animals are usually a bit afraid of humans, but if people feed them, they start losing that fear and might start invading in cities. If you leave your pet food or even garbage unattended, you actually feed coyotes because these delicacies attract them a lot. If you see a coyote in the wild, don't run away. If it's approaching you, it's better to throw something in its direction just to make it run away. Be especially careful in May when they need to protect their cubs. A can with rocks inside may come in handy. If you shake it, it'll be a sort of DIY noisemaker. When you're out walking, just carry it with you in case you need to frighten some wild animal away. Also, a flashlight is another good repellent for coyotes. Snakes, and especially rattlesnakes, like it when there's plenty of space. So if you meet a rattlesnake one day, stay at a distance of at least five feet away from it. Never try to attack it. If you do so, the snake will get mad at you and will definitely bite you. The good thing about rattlesnakes is that you can actually hear them rattle, so you can locate where this sound comes from. Don't step any closer until you understand where the snake's hiding. Otherwise, you risk stepping right on it. Never throw anything at snakes, because they will definitely strike back. You probably didn't expect this one, but adorable fluffy cats may be super dangerous if they're feral. Stray cats get together in gangs and sometimes attack not only those cats who live with humans, but even humans themselves. There are several signs that can help you understand cats' language. If the animal is frightened, it hisses, growls, and may even spit at you. Their eyes aren't dilated, their fur is quite relaxed, and they keep their head up straight. If the cat's aggressive, its fur is on end and its ears are back. The eyes get dilated, and instead of hissing, the animal howls. To calm the cat down, speak in a low, soothing voice. A cat might want to sniff you too, just like dogs do, so don't be afraid to let the animal do that. Don't touch the cat, because there are a lot of germs on their claws, and you don't want to get a scratch. 